All right, man, go on and tell the people your name and where you from. What's up, what's up? It's your boy Adele and the crazy man, you know. Bad Drew represent a Jigga City nigga. <laughs> How was life you growing up in Bad Rouge? Man, it's regular, man. It's just stay out of the way. You good, man. Niggas be talking like, oh, this and that. Bad news, man. Just stay out the way. Stay to yourself in this motherfucker. Now, you getting some shit. Yeah, it's it's, it's real. <laughs> you know, like I say, man, I... Shit, this day was a motherfucker. That taught me, man. Right, I cool. survived that shit. Get the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Hey, so when you started rapping? When you, you started rapping? Man, I really... I was 13, I really started writing shit. I was 12 or 13, 11, 12, 13, one of them. I was about 11. Then my daddy had bought me a fucking uh, tape recorder, so me and my partner, I don't know how the fuck we did it, but we had uh, headphones and we broke them bitches in the middle. So we had the instrumentals on the CD. So we put the, uh, put the, um, one, one side of the headphones to the speaker and had a beat playing and we used the other, Headphone as the mic, you hear me? Shit was we dropping bangers. Ain't no mixing, no bastard. The shit sounded crystal clear. <laughs> nigga, nigga drop a mixtape every fucking day after school. <laughs> Just straight freestyling, you hear me? So, uh, how many tapes you uh dropped since you started rapping? Oh man, I, I'm gonna keep it gangsta, bro. I'm gonna keep it real, like, like too many man. Who knows? Ain't that man? Like three, like I'm the type of nigga. I never was really in the studio, bro. Like I drop a song, do a couple songs, and you ain't gonna see me in that bitch. Like I'm getting it. I'm getting money. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, they mobbing on them, bro. Wasn't for nothing putting that bitch on that CD, man. It was, you know. But I was still promoting that bitch. You know, I was doing my own thing, my own few work. You know what I'm saying? I was always a hustler, now, you know. So I sat there. And, uh, I got my own CDs pressed up. Flies and shit, you know what I'm saying? Hooked up with the bootleggers, you know? And that bitch took off, like, it was doing this thing! But when he put that bitch on the CD, everybody was already familiar with that fucking song. So they was running that bitch, running that bitch. And this is called, like, man, that's all I'm hearing! You know what I'm saying? And that's like the only fucking song I had did that one that cooled me off and that, you know, and that was the only song. Other than that, man, I was I was in the streets, promoting it, getting money. You know what I'm saying? My pops had, uh, Rest in peace, my daddy, but he had bought me a um, Acura. I ain't know how to fucking drive, nigga. I took the I took the driving test like three, four times. You know what I'm saying? And baby mama kind of helped me, you know. But that nigga, I passed the driving test. Next day, I had a fucking car. And we had a concert in Lafayette, but I never forget. That's what I never fucking forget, bro. I don't know, bro. I, I got off on 22nd, you heard me? Got off on twenty second, and the light was red. I wonder why everybody was fucking blowing their horn at me, you know. But it said you could, you know, you could still turn right even though the light red. Man, I'm like, nigga, it's a red light. Everybody, wah, wah, blowing their motherfucking horn at a nigga. Man, I don't know, bro. I, the law was with me. I survived. Then we had a concert that night in fucking Lafayette. Like I said, Lafayette. So everybody hopped in the car with me for some fucking reason. Like we had, we was like five cars deep where everybody hopped in that bitch with me. And I'm like, I got out that bitch and hold up this. I ain't ready to drive on the motherfucking interstate like that to Lafayette, nigga. I'm a, and he said, man, you a real nigga, bro, because you, you, you ain't trying to kill a nigga tonight. Because <laughs> somebody was going to die because I ain't, man. I wasn't ready to drive on, no. After for live, man, I wasn't ready, man. I had, boy, I just, man, the law was with me, man. I, them times of driving, bro, because, man, I ain't going to lie. I, I just had to. I oh. had to stick and move, bro. I ain't know nothing. <laughs> All right, so you brought up this. How you managed to meet this? Man, I mean, this one, I like 16. Uh, one of my partners was uh doing business with him, you know what I'm saying? And I was just riding, you heard, man? Shit, I start, nigga, he type of nigga like, shit, see what you can do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I did my thing, brought it back, and I just kept Doing it like he started like he started fucking with it and he started giving nigga like all his old clothes. Like I still got him to this day. So like man, I told him nigga I was rapping, but he didn't want fucking hear it. You know, then he had open mic night. Like, man, come open mic night, bro. Like I it's crazy because I was at the at the house every day anyway. We would never talk about fucking rapping. I'd just be seeing what he doing, like this nigga plugged in with J Records. 
all type of shit, you know what I'm saying? So, he fucked around there and um, I, I, I ripped that bitch at the open mic. I had already had a song I had recorded by Color Pimp or uh, called That's Me. And shit, I performed that bitch and he got on it. You know what I'm saying? He he had he had got a new beat for like a more revamped beat for it. By the color pimp and uh he rapped, you know what I'm saying, did that bitch. And shit. After that man, we was shit. I'm it's down there and lived on 31st with her, huh? Took off after that. Oh yeah, it was it was on. Like I like say, but it was the grinding, like it was the grind, but we he was dealt, but we still was doing going to towns for the first time. We was doing this shit. It was like we was grinding together, bro, but he had the he had the juice, man. The nigga, you know, like the nigga had that juice, bro. Cause nobody fuck with nothing, man. When the nigga really built the empire with his own, you know, two for his money, man. Hey, for uh, people that never met Nissan, how would you describe? How would you describe Nissan? One of the, one of the realest niggas, man. Bad rules with him. I can tell you now, he would he would have a, a lot of control over shit going on, a lot of shit bad news going on, like niggas turning on each other, all this fake ass shit going on, like a lot of unnecessary beefs going on. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't it wouldn't be uh it wouldn't be going on if he was living. Him or Big Fancy, you know what I'm saying? They had a lot of control over a lot of shit, bro. Yeah. All right, so uh, this guy got killed. When was the last time you talked to this? Man, I ain't talking to this shit like all before that, cause I was on the way to the house. Well, the same house? Yeah. yeah, I was on the way, but he answered the phone, so I just went home because I had school that day. Yeah, and uh, I had school, so I was going to Southern, bro. And I, for some fucking reason, I went today because I, like I said, I had a bad, a bad little female in there. I was real cool with. We were talking, and I was going my mood, and she was like, "Yo, ass, you need to come to class." I went after class. I called because um, we was all we was already. I was about to get, I was about to quit school anyway, cause fuck, I had just talked to this, I'm like, bro, my fucking school loan is outrageous. I'm not, he was like, man, some, he was telling me his stepdaddy shit was off the chain too. And he was like, bro, you like, man, we about to get this deal, man. Shit, you might as well, you know. So I was fucking worried about school. So I had, um, I didn't go, I went home and I got a call from his sister. Cause like I said, the house where it happened at, you know, not too many people was allowed in that house, put it like that. So they was like, it's either you, another person, or another person that was in that house that got, that, that, that's dead. And I was like, fuck, I can't be me. And they were like, shit, they just, they had just pulled the body out while I was on the phone. She like, that's nothing. I'm like, what the fuck happened? But I had, you know, I had an idea, you know. I don't know, bro. It was so much shit, you know what I'm saying? And, and like I say, I, I went to school the next day. You know what I'm saying? Police came to school. What you about? Fuck. <laughs> I ain't go back to school after that, bro, because I went to school, but them teachers was looking at me fucked up after that, man. They was treating me a certain type of way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that was fucked up, though, man. So, uh, listen, like, you really had a plan to, like, unite the city. What, what was preaching about that? This was a plan, like, he was on really targeting like me and him sit down we'll take rides every day my nigga you know what i'm saying we'll take rides every fucking day so uh we'll sit there and um we'll take rides so he came with the with the idea of uh basically not actually signing people but giving people the the you know what i'm saying giving people the okay to use the dope celebrity name and put it on their cds like when they drop a project Man, put Dope Celebrity on now. Tell people you with Dope Celebrity. And they was, you know, to help them out and help us out too. You know what I'm saying? So, it was a lot of, you know, a lot of people there. So, it made it look, you know, it, it was like, we was touching places we didn't have to go to. But so, but when we go there, the bag waiting on us. With the concert, you know what I'm saying, to the fact, the person that's in that certain type of, that certain town, you know what I'm saying? That person that's in that town, you know, already promoting those celebrities. They promoting the fuck out that bitch. They with those celebrities, so shit. People that ain't no those celebrities, they like they googling, get on YouTube and shit. They see, they see what it is. So bam, they come to the bag. Wait, the club in the town gonna call us to come. And at the time, like I just said, Bobbin was heating up. He already had done way he yeah, had a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? It was nothing. 
Hey, you think Anissa was still alive? You think Bad Rouge would have been on a high level like Atlanta or Houston or something on, on the music? Oh. Uh, yeah, of course. Like he would have put a lot of niggas on. Like I say, he was he gave niggas the okay to man shit, you come pull up on this. You not some niggas you can't come pull up on like all right man, you come pull up on him. Wherever he at. Like man, come come holler at me. He'll talk to you face to face. Like shit, nigga like man, check the music out. He gonna check it out. He ain't gonna charge you to check him music. like some nigga man ain't gonna throw me a couple dollars here, man. Ah man. And you be how do you fuck with you? Yeah, how the fuck all this shit? Oh, you give them that nigga wasn't even taxing niggas like that for verses. Like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas was just scared to come on 31st and holler at them. But nigga was really there. Like, you know, he was there. Mm -hmm. And nigga come holler at them. Man, shit, get, get you a verse. Alright, so uh, you're the partner you used to rap with. Say that he ended up dying. Yeah, man. Yeah, oh, how that affect you when he died? Ooh. Yeah, say, it, with the nursing situation, I kind of. It fuck with me, but I was still, I had, like I said, I had Sadie Boo to talk to, talk to about my problem, I mean, you know, to help me through it, you know. But when Sadie died, bro, that, that, I was lost, man, because like I said, we had, we had a deal with Capitol Records on the table. Man. I'm talking about that bill right there. Sadie Boo, Sadie Boo, uh, and then here's another one, bro. I was just talking to Sadie Boo. The same night that? Same fucking day, like, yeah, we just talk, we, man, Sadie Boo talked every day, anyway. You know what I'm saying? We like we ain't talk we'll talk about music. Oh man, look, I got this beat. But other than that, bro, we'll be talking every day. Like, bro, we'll talk every motherfucking day, bro. Man, oh. So man, that's that shit fucked me up, dog. That shit still kinda fuck me sometimes when I be saying shit. That shit fucked me up, bro. Like, said the boo, bro, that shit told me told me the pieces, man. I ain't never felt like between like my daddy, that really hurt. Him. My daddy died with Seda Boo. That was like a feeling, bro. Probably cause then on top of that, we wasn't we wasn't into no like me and him wasn't into no gangster shit. Like we, you know, we was we were just having fun, go out of town. Like me and him was doing a lot of motherfucking shows. We was booked every fucking weekend, bro. We wasn't managing our money none of that. We were blowing that shit. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying we were blowing our shit. You heard me? How you manage a uh, link up with him? Oh, he came on 31st, bro. Uh, you know, like I say, uh, he he was plugged in with A1, the manager for uh, Dope Celebrity. And, uh, shit, I was hearing about the nigga. They was like, man, they had a nigga come in the studio, Yo, broke the chip, man. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> they had a nigga on my mix, my space, bro. It was my space. The nigga used to spam my shit, put his face. I am the rapper. What he used to call it? I'm the rapper, worst enemy. That nigga, like all my comments, bro. When you put that nigga, put his face all down. I mean, who is this nigga, man? I never paid him no mind. But he ain't sound too. He ain't look too big. Till you met him in person. Yeah, till I met him in person. Then I, was, I think my baby mama dropped me off on thirty first and said the bulls. I, I was telling her about. It. They said they got a big nigga spot. I'm about to go say I'm about to meet him for the first time. But the nigga can rap. And I was checking his songs out on his MySpace. But so I met him, bro, and. I don't know, I think I had did something stupid and he started start busting out laughing. And I was like, he was the only nigga there, so I had to work the club that night. We had a club DCL. Mm -hmm. I told him shit, nigga, you gonna help me. So fuck, he helped me sell water and take the money at the door that night. And shit, we were just running it, bro. And I you know, and shit, we got each other no we Fuck, we was talking the other day after that then. I told that nigga start coming to my shows, man. Said so, like I say, say the boy ain't one. He ain't never want to take his shirt off. He ain't never want to take his shirt off, man. Take that bitch off. Man, we was in a club. Bro, I swear he took that bitch off. We was in a motherfucking club called, a little teen club called Jumping Jacks. When I tell you, that motherfucker went crazy. <laughs> that nigga took his shirt off. That bitch with bananas, you heard me? And, oh. and shit after that, man. <laughs> Said the booth fucked around and uh, made a video talking, talking shit, bro. Like he do, talk shit with his shirt off. And said it was like, bro, I made fucking world. We were like, I'm like a world star. We ain't even know about world star. Man, this bitch, I'm talking about when I, and he put his number on there. When I tell you, we couldn't like, he couldn't talk on the phone. Or you couldn't call his phone, that nigga phone was ringing so much. So like all that shit niggas talking, they going viral. Man, said it was the first nigga to really go viral, bro. I don't give a fuck what a nigga say. That nigga broke the internet. Then on top of that shit, like I say, it was shit. He was a real nigga. 
You know what I'm saying? I was helping him out, so he was like, shit. You know, we start, we made a, we start making videos. We all start with pandas, videos. You know what I'm saying? So shit, we will start dropping videos, just talking shit. And niggas ain't really know he can rap when he making world star. Niggas ain't know he can rap, you know. So he start putting on when they were when they when they heard him rap, it was on. It was on after that then shit. Like I say, man, we took off. Took off. Man, it was on, nigga. We was getting it. <laughs> All on TV, Shaq show, you know what I'm saying? We was on Shaquille show. Now that was you know, that was tight too, That was a great experience, man. We was in we stayed in Florida for about three days, four days. But it ain't what people like, you know, all, all the fun of games, you know, it look, that shit was work, man. <laughs> like we didn't get no time to have fun because we was constantly having to rehearse and some stage presence and we can't wear it. Nigga had to go find more clothes because we could, they didn't want to pay. Like I had some Saint shit to wear on TV and Polo, you know, Polo was a thing back then. So couldn't wear that because they were like, well, we're not about to pay the Saints. So we had to go find some shit. Because the clothes they was about to give us, you heard me? They had some interns in the backstage, you know. Nigga gave me a hat that was too motherfucking big. A shirt that was like over my, they were like, well, I'm like, I'm not wearing that shit. You got to think about we in Orlando, Florida. First time on TV and shit. Yeah, like, yeah, man, ain't about to answer. We in Orlando, Florida, bro. And they don't fuck. The people, they, it was fucking Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon Studios, so man, they got mother them motherfuckers don't know how to they all that type of they dress as motherfuckers, they used to dress motherfuckers for all that cousin skeeter type shit. Man, they don't I'm not about to go on TV looking like that, man. <laughs> hey, you think uh you lost interest in uh music a little bit when you lost your two partners? Yeah, I did. I wanted to live a regular life. Mm -hmm. Like but the man, my phone was blowing so much, bro, with shows and I go make the money. But like, like now, nah, but like I'm really just really getting back in, bro. But like I lost interest, like I really lost interest when the Boo died, bro. Cause then on top of that, like I start having health problems with my blood pressure, cause I was, was just too much going on. Like I had to, I wanted to live a regular life, man. Like I kind of, I'll be on the road, bro. Then I had to, like, you know, I start having kids. I had two kids, and I'll be on the road so much, bro. And they was growing up, like I'll be talking to them on the phone. They was babies, man, and I. It was like weekend. I was I was missing like Friday night football, man. I wanted to do that shit. Like a lot of shit. I was man. I was young, like nigga. Like, and I was doing it. My we was doing this shit ourselves, bro. Like when this died and we plugged in rough and rugged, and you know what I'm saying. At the time being, before Sid Boot died, but like before that, like we still was, you know, like, bro. I wanted to enjoy life, man. Like I was missing football games, and I'll be here. Just a lot of shit I was missing on Saturday nights. I just want to watch movies and lay in the fucking bed. Like when I we didn't have concerts, I ain't gonna lie, me and said we went to sleep out. Like it was rare we didn't have concerts. Like on a Saturday night, we didn't go out. Some people like go out and wanna jump. Man, we went to sleep out eight o'clock. We was tired, but we was exhausted, bro. And hey, we were seeing money, but man, we wasn't managing. We ain't know. Like we ain't had no manager. You know, people was, wasn't keeping it real. Like when we had managers, they didn't move fast as uh, me. Like I booked all our shows. When we'll get a manager, bro. We, they wasn't moving fast. Like, come on now, you know what I'm saying? They moving their paces, and they wasn't working, bro. So I'm like, man, we I'm gonna book this shit, bro. All right, let's go on, wrap it up, man. What people gonna expect from you in the near future? Man, look, I got it. Uh, actually, bro, I'm about to go to the studio with Tyree Neal right now. We got some Zydeco shit going. I'm ready to make that trail ride money, you know. Yeah. Wear my motherfucking boots and Levi's with the cowboy hat. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck was that though? But yeah, bro, I got the, uh, a mixtape called It's Real. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, bro, I got, I been handled it. It seemed like, it seemed like my juice really done turned up. Like, it's, it's like people, so many people waiting. Like, I really have, be having labels call me, bro. I'm like, what are you doing? You were supposed to be a million now. What the fuck you doing? Like, and. They motivated me, bro. Like, I just had to get my mind right, bro. It took a year or two, man. It took some years to get back right, bro. I'm still young, bro. Luckily, I ain't no old nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, I shit. Like I say, I, I got a taste of that regular life, bro. And it's really, fuck, it's, it's more fucking politics <laughs> than the music, bro. Everything fucked up. So, why not control my own life now with this music? Like, I'm already, I'm, I already did the fee work, like. I done did so much grinding, bro. You can't, you can't forget a nigga. Like, Mob is still running like a brand new song right now. It's crazy, bro. Bless. Thanks to 
Listen, bro. That bitch still, you know what I'm saying? And all that, oh, you know, all that, you know, politics with him and his old beef still going on. You know, and that bitch blowing the song up, you know. <laughs> you know, you know, DCF ain't never dead, man. That shit was real, bro. I don't give a fuck what a nigga say, man. DCF touched the streets more than any motherfucking label out here. And we had, you know, we got inside on top of that, we had some real gangsters that was down. You know, real street niggas, you know what I'm saying? That that's really got rank. You know, and had a lot of rank, you feel me? So, uh it's like I say, bro, man, you be watching for that project is real about to drop and you about to see a whole lot of crazy man all over this bitch like all over the world now, man. Back the, the back on TV. Like I said, they got some shit. Got some movies, you know what I'm saying? About to, I can't really talk on it yet. They got some movies about to drop, you know, that's about to help a nigga out, you know what I'm saying? And uh, just a lot of shit, bro. A lot of shit, man. I can't talk too much, cause you know, once you talk, when you when you speak so soon on shit, it, it, it fuck your blessings up, bro. <laughs> but like I'm saying, I'm a blessed man. I, I survived a lot of craziness in these bad rule streets, man. Thank the Lord, bro. I survived that shit cause I that shit, shit was real, man. It was it was it was most definitely everything y'all heard, it was most definitely real, man. Everything, man. That shit was that shit was crazy, man. A lot of lot of shit, bro. Alright, I'm out this bitch, man. Shout out my nigga, check him out. Add check him out, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for the interview. I really don't do interviews with a lot of motherfuckers, you know. I turned out a lot of shit, but I fuck with dudes, man. Y'all go check them out on this ground, man. About to be the next big thing after motherfucking Jigga City, man. It's real.